Judge Vanessa Reynolds, a respected black jurist, faced a shocking incident when a white police officer pulled her over. Mistakenly believing she had stolen the vehicle, the officer confronted her with baseless accusations. Reynolds, a product of a predominantly black working-class neighborhood, had overcome significant hurdles to reach her esteemed position. Through sheer determination and countless hours of hard work, she became one of the state's youngest judges. Renowned for her fairness, integrity, and unwavering dedication to justice, Reynolds' judicial role served as a testament to her perseverance and strength of character. She carried her title with a sense of dignity and responsibility, recognizing its significance not only for herself, but also for her community. Judge Vanessa Reynolds, a black woman navigating her Mercedes through an affluent neighborhood, was startled by flashing lights behind her. A seasoned jurist with a deep understanding of systemic racism, Vanessa was particularly mindful of this case involving alleged police misconduct, given its media attention and personal significance. As she pulled over, Officer James Lawson, a white veteran of the force known for his strict demeanor, approached her vehicle. License and registration, Lawson demanded, his hand hovering near his holster. Vanessa complied, maintaining her composure despite growing irritation. Lawson scrutinized her documents with increasing skepticism. Is this your vehicle? He questioned, his tone laced with doubt. Yes, it is, Vanessa replied calmly, drawing from past experiences of unwarranted scrutiny. What's your business in this area? Lawson persisted. Vanessa, keeping her frustration in check, explained, I'm en route to the courthouse. I'm presiding over a case this morning. Lawson's disbelief was palpable. You're telling me you're a judge? Vanessa, her heart racing but her exterior calm, offered, My courthouse identification is in my bag if you require additional verification. Step out of the vehicle, Lawson commanded, disregarding Vanessa's offer to show her identification. Vanessa paused, weighing her options. Despite knowing her rights and innocence, she recognized that resistance could escalate the situation. She carefully exited the car, keeping her hands visible. Lawson, without permission, began searching her vehicle, carelessly scattering her meticulously organized files across the passenger seat. Vanessa observed, her frustration mounting as she witnessed her belongings being treated so dismissively. Is this search truly necessary, officer? Vanessa inquired, her tone composed yet assertive. Lawson continued his search without acknowledging her question, extending his inspection to the trunk. Finding nothing incriminating, he faced her with a self-satisfied expression. We're going to the station to clarify this situation, he declared. Indignation surged through Vanessa. Despite her cooperation, she was being treated unjustly. Striving to maintain her composure, she responded, This is unacceptable. There's no valid reason for detaining me. I've committed no offense. Lawson dismissed her protest with a shrug, seemingly relishing his authority. We'll determine that at the station. As Lawson moved to radio for backup, Vanessa made a swift decision. She retrieved her phone and placed a brief call, her gaze fixed on Lawson throughout. Lawson scoffed. What do you think that'll achieve? Vanessa stood tall, her dignity unwavering. She remained silent, determined to see this situation through. Minutes later, an unmarked vehicle arrived. A man in a suit emerged and approached Vanessa. Judge Reynolds, the newcomer greeted her. Is everything in order? Lawson, confused, questioned the man's identity. The man presented his credentials. I'm Assistant District Attorney Michael Turner. Judge Reynolds is a valued colleague. What seems to be the issue, officer? Realization dawned on Lawson. I... I wasn't aware of her identity, he stammered. Turner's demeanor hardened. Does that justify your actions? Consider your next move carefully. Lawson's assurance crumbled. Muttering apologies, he returned Vanessa's documents. My apologies, Judge Reynolds, he mumbled. Vanessa reclaimed her documents. Expect to hear from my office, Officer Lawson, she stated before acknowledging Turner. Thank you, Michael. Turner nodded as Lawson retreated. 
Vanessa returned to her Mercedes, her mind a whirlwind of anger, frustration, and injustice. After arriving at the courthouse, Vanessa headed straight to her chambers. Closing the door behind her, she sat at her desk, trying to make sense of the recent events. Although she'd faced discrimination before, this time felt different, more personal. As a judge committed to upholding justice, being treated like a criminal was deeply unsettling. Vanessa realized that what she experienced went beyond her own situation. It symbolized the injustices faced by many who lacked the resources or voice to fight back. She felt a duty to use her role to make a difference and to ensure such incidents wouldn't happen again. She called her assistant. Please schedule a meeting with the chief of police, she instructed, and get me the contact for Officer Lawson's superior. We need to address this right away. Even while working through her cases, Vanessa's mind kept drifting back to her encounter with Lawson. She knew she had the authority to take action and was determined to confront the issue directly. The next day, Vanessa met with police chief Margaret Davis, a woman known for her no-nonsense approach. As Vanessa recounted the events, Davis's face grew more serious. This is completely unacceptable, Davis said firmly. I'll personally oversee the investigation into Officer Lawson's conduct. Rest assured, Judge Reynolds, we will address this swiftly and thoroughly. Vanessa appreciated Davis's commitment. Thank you, Chief. I know this is part of a bigger problem. My aim isn't just to discipline one officer. I want to work with you to prevent these situations from happening again. Chief Davis gave Vanessa a respectful nod. I agree. Let's use this as an opportunity to drive real change. Over the following weeks, Vanessa and Chief Davis worked closely together. They launched extensive training programs for the police department, focusing on bias awareness, cultural sensitivity, and proper conduct during traffic stops. Officer Lawson was placed on administrative leave while the investigation unfolded and Vanessa was kept updated throughout. But Vanessa's work didn't stop there. Understanding that true reform required tackling the system itself, she began advocating for broader changes in the justice system. She spoke at community meetings, collaborated with lawmakers, and supported legislation aimed at holding law enforcement accountable for discriminatory actions. The police misconduct case that had concerned Vanessa on the day of her traffic stop now carried a new weight. With a renewed sense of purpose, she oversaw the case, ensuring justice was served and the officers involved were held responsible. The case drew national attention, and Vanessa became a figurehead in the fight for justice and equality in the legal system. The investigation into Officer Lawson revealed a pattern of similar behavior. His eventual removal from the force was met with mixed reactions. While Vanessa saw this as a minor success in a much larger fight, she viewed it as a step in the right direction. Months after the incident, Vanessa was going through case files in her office when she received an unexpected letter from Officer Lawson. She hesitated before opening it, revealing a carefully handwritten message. Dear Judge Reynolds, I'm not certain if this will find you, but I felt the need to reach out. These past few months have given me time to reflect deeply on our interaction and my career choices. I now see the mistakes I made, not just in how I treated you, but in my overall approach to policing. Despite my 10 years on the force, I've realized that my actions often did more harm than good. I allowed my biases to influence my decisions and acted with arrogance, not responsibility. While I know I can't change the past, I want you to know I'm committed to doing better. Losing my job was the wake-up call I needed. I've started volunteering at a youth center, working with young people who've had negative encounters with the police. It's been a humbling experience that's made me truly understand the impact of my actions and those of my colleagues. I'm not asking for forgiveness, as I understand the severity of my actions, but I wanted you to know that I'm striving to improve. Your poise and strength during our encounter made me realize I was on the wrong path, and for that, I'm grateful. Sincerely, James Lawson. Vanessa leaned back, pondering the unexpected message. Though the apology was delayed, it appeared sincere. Lawson's struggle with the fallout from his behavior was evident, and while she wasn't sure how to fully respond, 
She appreciated his recognition of his wrongdoing. As she thought about the many individuals who had faced similar mistreatment without the means to fight back, she knew that lasting change would take time. But Lawson's newfound self-awareness offered a small glimmer of optimism. Vanessa returned to her work, focused on advocating for reforms and reshaping the justice system. Driving home that evening, she reflected on her journey. Despite the obstacles, she was determined to make a difference. The road ahead might be long, but Vanessa was ready to face it with her unwavering commitment to justice. The next morning, Vanessa arrived at the courthouse with renewed resolve. As she took her seat on the bench, gavel in hand, she felt a strong sense of purpose. Each case and ruling would reinforce her stance that discrimination had no place in her courtroom or in society. Her experiences had deepened her understanding of systemic issues and strengthened her resolve to bring about change, not only through her rulings, but through advocacy and mentorship. As she called the first case of the day, Vanessa was prepared to continue her fight for justice, knowing that every step brought her closer to the fair world she envisioned. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this story. Have you ever encountered or witnessed a situation like the one described? Feel free to share your experiences in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you in our next video.